Hi, Bob Nagy here, AB5 n with another equipment review today. Thanks for watching. We're going to talk about the IC9700 today, and it is the talk of the town this season, and for good reason. It's the first SDR 2 meter 450 1.2 gigahertz multi-mode radio. It is the first and only that exists right now, and its form factor, factor matches the very, very popular IC7300. Boy, what a pair if you have both of them. Likely on the inside they're using similar architecture too. That means the 14-bit, probably using the same 14-bit SDR chipset. And the cats are going crazy back there. Now I'm sure you've seen a lot of videos on the 9700 go through YouTube and there's all kind of, you know, showing particular aspects, noise reduction or whatever, different aspects of the radio, people enjoying using the radio. Uh, and you might think that 1800 bucks or so is a lot to pay for a radio, a tri-band radio. It would be if it wasn't that this radio has incredible capabilities. It has an incredibly wide feature set. So I would guess that probably 5% of buyers are going to use 100% of this radio's capabilities. Now, if you only use 75% of this radio's capabilities, you're probably still getting your value out of the radio. So I'm not going to spend two hours here pre-digesting the manual. I mean, the, uh, the advanced user manual is over 200 pages itself. That's the second manual. For the radio so it would be it would take hours to go through that we would never make it through the video uh, what i would like to do is tell you everything that this radio can do in short order and then we'll talk about is is it worth buying one i mean that's the bottom line question isn't it you want to buy one so let's go through all that this radio can do first it's a high power radio it's 100 watts on 2 meters, and here's where you adjust your power level, 75 on 450, and 10 watts on microwave 1.2. The spectrum scope is an FFT type for very fast refresh rate and really some nice colors and display, fully customizable through the menus, color, persistence, and things like that. It includes all modes. Hit the mode, and we can see we have sideband, CW, RTTY, AM, FM, DV, which is D-Star, and D-Star data modes. It's a direct sampling SDR in 2 meters and 450 and a mixer on 1.2 gigahertz. Its design leans in the direction of being superlatively sensitive because of course you don't need the selectivity as much on the higher bands, although its selectivity numbers are excellent as well. It has preamps on each band, easy to turn on and off, and they're individual preamps and also have individual DC control through the back. So you can say, I've got a preamp on which band you've got it on and have it turn the DC on and off and inject it via the coax into the preamplifier at the antenna, which is where you want it. It's got 32 bit noise reduction and notch controls right here. It's got three presets for each filter. One, two, and three, you hit the filter button here, and if you hold it down, then you can individually adjust the bandwidth of that filter, its soft or sharp edges, either by just simply hitting bandwidth, and then adjusting with a main tuning dial. It's got full satellite implementation. Menu, satellite, and bam, we're into the satellites. I've got all the popular satellites already programmed in here. Very easy to do. Inputs, outputs, the FM satellites, the sideband linear translators, we're ready to go. You've got normal and reverse tracking, and all the stuff you need to work all the amateur satellites. It is a full duplex radio, and that's a good thing, especially when you're on satellite. I can transmit up on 450 here. Let's open the squelch on two meters. Hitting that transmit button, and I'm still receiving on two meters, or vice versa. It's got 99 memories per band. And it also has scan edges per band and call channels per band. Hit the menu. Let's take a look at the memory. And we can scroll through them. It comes with fantastic software free. It's very easy to operate and program this radio with, with a single USB cable. So no need to buy that. Or you can do it with the buttons on the radio. In D-Star, it has the DR mode. Sort of a nice automated way to do things. Immediately, you can set up where you want to go and who you're talking to, either a nearby repeater or from the grand repeater list itself, or reflectors and things like that. So it's very easy to set up your communication in D-Star using that DR mode. The ICOM 9700 has DPRS, 
Now, DPRS sends your position information and optionally weather and object information into the APRS system via a D-Star gateway. That means it embeds the information in the D-Star signal along with the voice, and you turn this on in the GPS menu. So when you key up going through a gateway system on D-Star, it will send your normal APRS information to the APRS system online. The IC9700 is not set up to do traditional analog APRS transmission or reception. It has the capability of connecting to a uh, part of the D-Star system via just using an Ethernet cable in the back. And there's some instructionals online on how to do that. As well, you can use a Raspberry Pi running Pi Star and have this operate into a Pi Star for your, well, hard connect hotspot and get out fully onto the D-Star system. The radio also has the capability of being a D-Star hotspot itself. Access point mode. And Thus, you could have yourself a high power access point at home. Now, it's not set up. That's why it told us that we're not connecting to the network. Luckily, with the uh, current firmware update, it allows you to inject a external 10 megahertz GPS source. Now, here's mine over here. It's got a cable going to the back of the radio, and it uses a little hockey puck antenna and is able to lock the radio to complete frequency accuracy. Now, using the SD card, which we've put in there, it has a record function, and that's great because you can record a QSO at any time by hitting that record start button, and you can play files that you've already recorded over here. It'll have the, the dates and things like that. Okay, I was recording some satellite downlinking over there. Sometimes it was coming in good. There we go. And, of course, you can do other things with it, which is record uh, CQs and things like that and have them canned and ready to go. You can set your recorder up to sort of customize it. If you want it to record, say, 10 seconds before you press that, that button to record, so you're going to catch stuff that you think you might have missed, that kind of thing, uh, all kind of other stuff. Do you want it to record your side of the queue, so as well as the other side, that kind of thing. So very handy and you know, perfectly high-quality uh, audio. This radio has equalizers, audio equalizers, for all the modes in transmit and receive. We go to set, we go to tone control, let's say we want to go to the receiver. Every different mode can be set up with bass and treble and some other stuff here on receive and transmit, including DV mode, the D-Star. Back it up, go to transmit, and we've got the same thing, including your SSB digital mode. You can set the transmit bandwidth. So you can customize it. And the internal speaker on this thing and audio amp sound fantastic in the native box itself. The SD card over here is used for recording QSOs and outgoing transmitted audio, but also the entire configuration of the radio, which is sort of handy. You can hit that menu, set, go down to SD card, and any time you can save the settings in the, in the radio or load up ones from previously saved sets. The radio has the capability of synchronizing its internal clock with the National Time Standards atomic clock over here, date set, NTP time sync, and it'll automatically do that for you. You can put in the server over here. I think it's auto-populated already, and you can sync the time up so that the radio's internal clock will be perfect. And what's nice is this radio has one USB cable for complete CAT computer aided transceiver control and audio, bi-directional audio. A lot of other radios use multiple cables or it's just kludgy the way it works. This thing really is slick and they really worked it out well, so it makes it really easy for digital interfacing. Now this radio has a bevy of standard features you'd find on an HF radio too, like passband tuning, and you can set that stuff up and use uh, control both of the passbands here with your multifunction control. It has split operation, of course. It has automatic frequency control, so you can just decide you want it to automatically follow a signal that might be drifting off frequency. It has ready decode. I think they just threw that in there from the HF side, and a bunch of other stuff. The radio also has an audio scope function. You access it here in the menu and it has two different forms it's showing you over here. It's showing you a standard oscilloscope type form and you can change the scan rate on that which is sort of nice. Whatever you prefer. And it also has a waterfall type display over here where you can see the actual bandwidth of the signal and whether your filter that you've set on the receiver is conforming to the actual bandwidth of the signal. 
And uh, lastly, feature-wise, I'd like to mention that it does have DTMF memory, which is sort of handy because a lot of times I'm not an FM there. If I was an FM, there we go, I can go to DTMF memory and I can send sequences of tones here that I put in, which are nice because I have an all-star system or other systems out there and you can just go bop, 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 bop and it kicks it into transmit and you can set the duration of the tones and the spacing of the tones there. Of course, we've got Vox operation as well and does, like I said, a lot of the stuff you just find, the notch and noise blank or noise reduction on an HF radio boxes over here. And you do have a MOX or a manual transmit button over there. So it has pretty much everything brought over from the HF world and lots of buttons here so you can get to stuff that really you do not find yourself going down into the menu to access stuff. The radio is also capable of displaying the two audio scopes and the spectrum scope with one of the bands active up here. So that's sort of pretty keen. And one thing I really love on all of the icons and this has is progressive tuning. So as you tune at a slow rate, it moves rather slow. And as soon as you pick up, it really cruises across a band. So being you have that nice visual acuity of band activity and you have the ability to jump around quick, the radio is very agile and a quick performer. Now, one thing that's quite unique to this radio, and you may think that other radios can do it, but they cannot, is to be running two D-Star sessions at once on two different bands. So I've got my uh, hotspot set up on the bottom over here, connected up to one Charlie, and I have the Little Rock D-Star repeater in the top slot. So it truly can do two independent D-Star channels and connections at one time. I wanted to state something for clarification purposes. You can put the NEMA output, the digital output of a GPS into the rear of this radio so that it knows where it is. And thus it can tell you what repeaters are nearby using the DR mode. But a GPS DO or GPS discipline oscillator is a different animal. And that uses a 10 megahertz output, which is locked to the GPS satellites and goes into the SMA connector on the back of the radio to accurize the frequency of the radio. So let's take a quick look at the rear of the radio and what connections are on it. The radio has three antenna connectors, one for each band. The only one that's an old PL259 kind, or the SQ239 female, is the 2 meter. 450 and 1.2 use silver Teflon end connectors. On the bottom left, you can see the gold-colored SMA connector for the GPSDO disciplined oscillator clock that comes into the back of the radio for frequency accurization, and right above it, the RJ45 Ethernet connector for complete remote control of this radio over the Internet. On the right side center top, we can see the four pin power connector. If you look at the bottom right of the fan, you can see the multi pin connector. And out of this thing comes your audio in, your audio out. It's got a COS line. That means when the squelch opens up, the voltage drops to near zero. It's got a PTT line. Of course, a ground. You can control RTTY keying from there. And that PTT is an input or output. You can key it. Or when the transmitter goes to transmit, it can shift state. So this is usually used. And also, I forgot to mention ALC as well for an amp. But this is traditionally used for, uh, used to be used for packet boxes and this kind of thing, but it interfaces with all kind of stuff in the outside world. Just to the right of it, you can see an eighth inch jack, and this is called the data jack. And you can connect a GPS unit here, or using other cables from ICOM, it can be used for other functions. Just to the right of that is your USB connection for all the uh, interfacing for the digital modes. The next two connections are the CIV remote control jack and your CW key input. And then on the right, you've got two speaker outputs, so you can have separate bands coming from two different speakers. Well, is that enough features for you? Wow, what a radio. And now we're to the question, should you consider buying one? Now, if you only operate FM repeaters with this radio, you are completely missing the point. It's a waste to do that. If you go on, uh, say, 2 meters and 450, maybe 1.2 SSB for some terrestrial DXing, Still, you could get other radios for less money, a used uh, IC910 or something like that. But if you use D-Star, use FM repeaters, you do some sideband DXing, uh, you want to learn satellites, uh, this is the radio for you. This really is. 
So challenge yourself. That's why I bought it. I do everything but the satellites, and I always wanted to do satellites. So there's a lot to learn in there. And of course, there's a steep learning curve on this radio. Now you can get it set up, use the uh, provided software to load the memories in, be on the FM repeaters really quick. It'll operate just like you expect it to operate, and you can get some satisfaction. But then, as you start digging into it, you're going to be able to peel away the layers of its capabilities and start to really uh, get some satisfaction doing stuff you haven't done before. Those things are, this radio is perfect for trying all the WSJTX modes, moon bounce, things like this. There's a lot of uh, terrestrial FT8 going on now on UHF and VHF. There's a net on uh, Monday nights in uh, Dallas on two meters. I've been trying to get into that. Uh, of course, with 100 watts on two meters sideband, maybe a receive preamp up on the antenna and a good Yagi, you're going to be able to snag some good uh, terrestrial DX and do some, you know, some fun stuff because there's still quite a bit of activity there. Uh, do you want to set up a D-Star hotspot at your house and drive around and use it? Got you covered. How about do you go on vacation and you'd like to operate your home radio over the internet? You're down in Florida, wherever, on the road? Got you covered. This radio operates very smoothly over the internet with that software from ICOM. So I do, do I think that $1,800 is, 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 is a high price for what this radio can do? I do not. I think it actually is a good value, and there is nothing like it out there on the market. Uh, they are selling very well, and this is a very good thing, because that means there's going to be a large user base. That means it's going to have a lot of forums, Facebook groups, stuff to get support when you have questions. I've been out there asking questions. And the radio is going to have a long shelf life with ICOM, meaning that they're going to support it for a long time. So it's a, it's a safe investment. Um, also, P.S., there were a few warts early on when the radio first came out, but ICOM was listening. They addressed them with a firmware update, and now it's wart-free. So it's a really, really superb radio. I hope this helps uh, clear your mind on your decisions about looking at this radio for purchase, and I appreciate you watching. So until next time, take care.